第三十二对演讲题目是 Number Four， 计时开始。Good morning, dear judges and fellow students. No doubt, as global citizens, we can't but keep an eye on what's going on in the world, even when it seems far from us right now. Today, there are many issues that we cannot ignore. Among them, in my opinion. The environmental crisis caused by plastic pollution, the economical tension triggered by the U.S.-China trade war, and the human rights apocalypse for the Uyghur people are the most important and urgent issues that we Taiwanese must pay attention to. My partners will share more about these issues. Thanks, Bella. First, I will talk about the environmental crisis caused by plastic pollution. To begin with, I'd like to ask you to think about what you bought for breakfast today and what came with it. Your breakfast wrapping material, the plastic bag that allowed you to take your food to go, the seal on your morning tea, and the straw the clerk thoughtfully put into the bag. So that you can drink your tea without spilling it over your shirt. These products undoubtedly give us so much convenience in life, but the comfort comes with consequences, which are unfortunately bestowed on animals first. These days, we keep hearing about marine life such as whales or dolphins being washed up on shores, and many of them died because of the plastic they consumed. As a country with people relying on the ocean so much, soon we might be facing food shortage because every creature on the food chain will be under the impact. Only by reducing the use of plastic products, reusing the reusable, and recycling correctly can we slow down and maybe reverse plastic pollution. Thanks, Candy. Aside from plastic pollution, the influence of the U.S.-China trade war on us can be tremendous. The ongoing economic conflict between the world's two largest economies was initiated by Donald Trump, president of the U.S., who has long accused China of unfair trading practices and intellectual property theft. Over the past year, the two countries have imposed punitive tariffs. On one another's goods, hurting businesses and weighing on the global economy. Since Taiwan has been a major supplier of electronic products to China, some worry that once the U.S. cut off Chinese export of such goods, China's demand of Taiwanese components will decrease rapidly, thus hurting Taiwan's economy. On the other hand, our Ministry of Economic Affairs has launched. A three-year reshoring incentive program, providing assistance for Taiwanese manufacturers that are repatriating from China and returning to Taiwan, by bringing these technology companies home, the government aims to revitalize local industry. Thank you, Sarah. Finally, as we are just one sea away from China, the human rights pet. The human rights apocalypse happening in Xinjiang definitely is an issue we should be aware of. Since 2014, China's Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Regional Government has been operating re-education camps in this region, holding hundreds of thousands of Uyghurs and Muslims from other ethnic minorities in these camps. In August 2018. A United Nations Human Rights Panel announced to have received credible reports indicating one million ethnic Uyghurs in China have been held in these camps. A mother was forced to be separated from her infant children, and one of her triplets died during her detention, while the other two developed health problems. What these detainees are and have been going through is too terrible to picture. 
Taiwan should stand with other 22 countries in condemning such practice and in supporting the detainees' rights. Thanks, Miki. Being a Taiwanese and a global citizen, not only should we be aware of the aforementioned global issues, as they can have a great impact on us, we should also take some action to tell the world that we Taiwanese are eager to take a stand and to be involved in what's happening around the globe. Thank you. The 26th演讲题目是 Number 4,即时开始 There are many important global issues these days. In my opinion, environmental issue and harmful sexual issue is the most important of all the issues. But do you know how do they affect our life? Homosexual affect Taiwan. Homosexual nowadays are accept to the society, but it is not acceptable to the elderly traditional thought because they thought that homosexual they are the outcasters. They are not be acceptable to the society. But now they changed. It changed because although although everybody are different from each others, but they are all equal to the law. Nowadays, the homosexual they can get married, and how do you define marriage? Is that a, it must to be a girl and a a boy? No. Now, I define. We define the marriage as a closer friendship. It is not like a lover now. At first, marriage as defi is defined as a tool to get birth. But now, we define it as a more, to be more closer to the people who like to relax. Maybe they have sent sexual to you, with you, but it's not important. The important is how you feel. We cannot resist the bisexual and the crooker because they all have the right to love others. They are equally as us, the normal on the law. We should accept their behavior and try to respect them. And now, the homosexual should not be afraid of what they are thinking about because the law is equal to everybody. That is equal to everybody and the homosexual don't need to afraid about what are they thinking because we don't punish them because they are thought we are an open society Number 
Number two, 计时开始 Good morning, everyone. Please repeat these words, okay? Ready? Kamusta. Oh, again. Kamusta. Very good. Next one. Salama. Yes. Does anyone know what you just learned? Anyone? You are just speaking Filipino. One of the one of two official languages of. You guessed it. The Philippines. Fortunately, for at least most people in this room, the other one is English. So, if you follow the advice that we're going to suggest to you over the next few minutes, I promise you, you have an unforgettable experience. Now you may be wondering, why the Philippines? Well, over seventy eight thousand Pinoys reside in Taiwan, and in keeping in line. It's a southbound policy. We must first understand each other if we want to help each other. And what better way than to immerse yourself in another culture? Now Anna is going to outline where we're going and what we're doing. Salama, Charlie. Any trip to the Philippines is going to involve several kinds of transportation, from small tricycles or the iconic jeepney. To buses, ferries, and planes. The bonus here is that these small vehicles create an atmosphere that's perfect for sharing stories and interacting with the locals. So, after you land in Manila and check into the airport hotel, because it's close and the traffic in this capital moves at a snail's pace, literally, hop in a tricycle and head to Manila's old city. Here you can try all the local food, and it's located in an old fort the Spanish built when it first landed on the island. It will give you a deep insight into the rich history and culture of the Philippines. It's home to many museums and ancient cathedrals, including the San Agustin Church, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Taking a day to tour this place will enrich your entire trip. And make you look at everything in a whole different light. Now Sharon is going to continue our journey. Thanks, Anna. Next, cross the Pasig River and head into Binondo, the world's oldest Chinatown. This trip will help you learn about the unique mix of Hispanic and Asian traditions that dictate life in the Philippines to this very day. After a nice rest. We fly to Vigan City, another UNESCO World Heritage Site. Visiting this place is like taking a step back in time. The well-preserved Casa Cruz logo is the best remaining example of a Spanish colonial town in Asia. So after a few days of loading up on culture and history, now it's time to leave Luzon and fly south to the tiny. But world famous island of Boracay. If you remember, yesterday we mentioned that this country has over 7,600 islands. Well, this one tops them all. If you're looking for the perfect beach experience, Boracay is one of the best places to go to. The whitest sand you'll ever see, and with so many islands. Why just visit one, Ruby? That's right, Sharon. Next, we fly over to El Nido in Palawan, one of the Philippines' top tourist destinations, full of gorgeous islands, bays, and capes. There's enough here to last you a whole trip. But after a day here, we'll take a three-hour jeepney ride south to the Puerto Princesa Underground River. It's another UNESCO World Heritage Site. And became a new seven wonders of nature in 2012. The subterranean river is located inside a huge system of caves, filled with stalactites, stalactites, minerals, and crystals. A day of cruising down this river in a canoe is sure to be an absolute wonder. And after all of this, it's time to fly back to Manila and head home. So again. 
why the Philippines? It's close, cheap, easy to communicate, full of history and culture, and it boasts some of the most pristine beaches in the world. And as Charlie mentioned earlier, almost 80,000 Filipinos call Taiwan home. So the next time you bump into one, be sure to say hi, or should we say, Mabuhay! Thank, Thank you. you. Number five, Franklin Roosevelt once remarked that we cannot always build the future for our youth, but we can build our youth for the future. With the development of technology and globalization, it is crucial for Taiwanese youth to foster advantages in order to thrive on the international stage. Honorable judges, Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to recognize skills we, as young Taiwanese, need to cultivate in order to enhance our international competitiveness. Take it from here, Ethan. Being an influential and effective communicator across different social strata and cultures is important for today's youth. Brilliant orators always have an advantage in life. English is the world's international language as well as being the language frank of the internet. Being well versed in English heightens one's international standing and sophistication. With the rise of social media, many ordinary people have used compelling dialogue to enthrall a growing number of viewers. They've reached upwards to connect with millions of netizens, becoming international sensations. A high proficiency in English makes this possible. This youth diplomatic envoy competition is also one of many examples of the Taiwanese government supporting compelling English communication. Being an effective English speaker ensures a higher degree of competitiveness. What about you, Sammy? Two years ago, my uncle was forced to retire from his design company, for he didn't have the pertinence to keep up with the fast-paced advancement of computer software. Owing to technological prowess, new companies could produce higher quality products, faster and cheaper. As the world become progressively digitized, Taiwanese youth must be proficient and adapt in grasping incoming technologies. A student cannot reach their potential if they are stifled by technological bamboozlement. With the advancement of AI technology, a fundamental knowledge based on computer program designing is becoming more valuable and necessary. Consequently, it is paramount that we are up to date on new helpful technologies. Not only can these updates help us to be more competitive, but they can save us more valuable time to use wisely. Tell us more, Adeline. The rapid development of technology is changing the way we live, work, communicate, and even process information. It also comes with databases of distractions, social media, video games, podcasts, and other online resources can squander the precious time of your life. Sometimes you won't even realize it. This is why having good time management skills is continuously becoming more valuable. Having an efficient schedule coupled with savvy tech understanding can make or break a person's career. Moreover, to lead a well-balanced life we must also exercise, relax, work, and socialize away from technology. Being a master at managing your time and productivity is an integral part of being a more competitive and successful person. It has never been more constructive and apropos for Taiwanese youth to get a better grip of themselves and learn better time management skills. I hand it back to you, Jane. 
being competitive isn't so much as winning, but striving to do our best to reach our highest quality while being able to be independent and resourceful. International competition is fierce and poses many barriers. In order to stand out as preeminent examples, we must be adept to global realities. Outstanding communication, dynamic practical use of technology, and allocating one's time properly is assuredly indispensable. By staying positive, healthy, moral, and of course competitive, Taiwan will have a lot to look forward to. Thank you. Number four, 计时开始 Good afternoon, everyone. In this modern world, sometimes even tiny changes can lead to huge negative outcomes. As a result, we have to be aware of several international issues, such as climate change, the pollution of ozone homes, and global warming. Most of these problems have been resulted from human beings. Because we pursue for a better life all the time, we over-exploit over natural resources. If we continue to do it, the Earth will be running out of these important resources. The most serious problem we would like to point out is climate change. Climate change can negatively result in countless severe consequences, like at the rise of the sea level, deforestation, desertification, global warming, so on and so on. Among the issues mentioned above, global warming is the best known one. Global warming results from greenhouse gas emission. Greenhouse gas emission results from the largest human influence has been the emission of carbon dioxide, methane, and nitro oxides. These gases are difficult to be released out from the surface of the Earth. Therefore, it keeps the Earth warmer and warmer. These gases are gradually emitted from our cars, factories, scooters, and the air conditioning. With the temperature gradually going up, lots of natural disasters happen. For example, the number and diversity of animals in Taiwan will be decreasing. Some of them will even be extinct. The sea level will be rising, and the glacier will be receding as well. In order to draw public attention to these issues, a Sweden girl called Greta Thunberg launched a strike due to a government's lack of action of slow down the climate change and global warming. The girl was so brave that she spoke out loud and tried her best to prevent us from getting more sick. We all should be fearless to fight for a better future. After all, we have only one us, don't we? In order to decelerate global warming, Paris Agreement was born in 2015. This agreement was formulated with jointly by 195 representative countries. There are three major points in this pact. First, it requires all the signing nations to all the signing nations to control the rise of temperature within the range of two Celsius degrees. Second, it also sets a long-term goal that broadens the obligatory countries to developing ones, such as Chinese, Thailand, and India. The list goes on and on. Last but not least, those countries involved in these agreements are devoting themselves to balancing the greenhouse emission and absorption in nature. They hope to achieve this goal by the end of 2050. However, this serious problem will not be relieved until every individual is putting efforts. We must have ourselves in finding alternative 
and renewable energies to to decrease the the public decrease the greenhouse gas emission. And the, the most important of all, we should put our we should put put our pra practice we should put our suits into practice before it's too late. Thank you. Number four, Good morning. On 23rd September 2019, the United Nations held a climate summit to bring world leaders of governments, private sectors, and civil society together to support the multilateral process and to increase and accelerate climate action and ambition. The summit focused on key sectors where action can make the most difference. Heavy industry, nature-based solutions, cities, energy, resilience, and climate finance. World leaders reported on what they are doing and what more they intend to do when they convene in 2020 for the UN Climate Conference. The conclusion indicates that we need more concrete plans, more ambition for more countries and more businesses. And also, we need all financial institutions, public and private, to choose once and for all the green economy. Even more than in many parts of the world, the climate in Taiwan is changing, bringing greater chances of extreme weather conditions. Will Taiwan be ready? Taiwan has been experiencing a steady trend of warmer winters, hotter summers, fewer but more torrential rains, and more frequent droughts, according to a 2017 government report. The Taiwan Climate Change Projection and Information Platform Project, TCCPIP, under the Ministry of Science and Technology, further notes that Taiwan's average temperature rise over the past century at 1.5 degrees Celsius further exceeded the global average of 0 0.8 degrees Celsius, as calculated by the United Nations Affiliated Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, IPCC. Over the last 30 years, Taiwan's temperature has risen by 0 0.3 degrees Celsius, far, much faster than the global average. The potential impact of water resources on public health is also a concern. For example, dengue fever, already at epidemic proportion last year in southern Taiwan, could migrate north as temperatures warms. Since the mosquitoes carrying dengue fever breed in stagnant water in hot climates, the extent of the challenge is expected to grow as temperatures rise. Taiwan is not yet implementing many of the recommendations of the various research groups. Aside from some general proposals regarding coastals and river valley development, according to the Adaptation Strategy Report, the work being done today will be of value in establishing a legal framework and government organization to deal with climate change, enhancing research and development in climate change adaptation technology, cultivating specialists, and increasing public awareness and knowledge about climate change. Another disadvantage is the limited number of scientists working on such models in Taiwan. The IPCC bases its confidence in its own climate projections on consensus derived by having a large group of scientists using various climate models. In Taiwan, those numbers aren't available. And since the international politics isolates Taiwan from the IPCC, Taiwan's climatologists are instead seeking for greater cooperation with regional organizations in South Korea, Japan, and the United States. Weather well, forecasting is not the area where Taiwan is making strides in both improving accuracy and gaining greater cooperation And since the international, the U.S. National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration (NOAA), for example, reportedly is seeking greater cooperation with Taiwan 
in weather forecasting and other areas of regional concerns. In sum, we suggest that our government tend to ease up the restrictions for big businesses seeking to invest, can hamper the enforcement of a country's well-developed system for environmental protection. Thank you. Number five, Good morning, honorable judges. Today, we are going to talk about topic five. In such trend of globalization, it is important for us to have ability to compare with others. As a, youth, as a part of youth, I will claim that we should equip ourselves a ability that to compare with to compare with others, curiosity for non-stop learning, resourcefulness in overcoming problem. In this age, many foreign caregivers come to Taiwan, so they must need to learn different countries, you know, different languages, and different cultures manners. But not every individual can easily pick up a new language, so the ability to adapt in a new environment is very important for us. Most of difficulties from moving to a new environment are loss of cultural asset. It is vital to understand and know the target, co the target culture. Our education, for instance, history or geography, should not be, should not be test oriented. Rather, it should include some ways to understand and to understand the differences between the target culture and ours. Schools can hold activities between schools can hold activities for us to understand the target cultures. We should all we should also we should we should also be resourceful so that the emerging problems need, wouldn't easily defeat us. I would blame for this blame of the training on this matter. In the, current, in the current education system, students might not understand anything but only know the surface of something. That is, we normally memorize the, the content on the book instead of understanding the true reason behind it. Plus, we, plus, plus we, we overly rely on the, on the, on the so-called high-end technology leading to a decreasing ability in coping with both expected and unexpected problems. What's more, helicopter parents are unnecessary, meaning that they should let their kids explore this wonderful world instead of just asking them to do whatever parents want. As Albert Einstein once said, the important thing is not to stop questioning. Curiosity has its own, has its own reason for existing. For me, curiosity is the driving force for learning. Without it, learning doesn't happen. Many things beyond our knowledge are happening every day. In, in, pursuit of, in, pursuit of, in pursuit of competitive, whatever, whatever happens, we should never stop learning and questioning. We are often told us having curiosity is important, but we never listen, neither do we take it seriously. We, the younger generation, should reflect ourselves and learn to live should reflect ourselves and learn to and make good use of electronic devices such as tablets, 
laptops, cell phones, and televisions. Through this, we can start to explore our wonderful world and engage in real life rather than in a virtual one. We learn because of curiosity. We keep learning because of appropriate guidance. We have constant curiosity, then we have the whole world. To sum up, people indeed have various ways to become perspective. There are three important skills to that. Curiosity, resourcefulness, and adaptability. All of these need appropriate guidance and assistance from our parents, educators, as well as our own reflections on the past behaviors. Thank you. Number four, Good morning, honorable judges and listeners. Our environment is facing severe challenges right now. Taiwan is one of the countries in global village. If we don't take change immediately, there will be nothing left on earth soon. Problems like pollution produced by human beings result in global warming animals extinction and resource depletion. Human beings are destroying the ecological environment. More and more factories destroy air pollution and wastewater into the air and river, and those wastewater then falls into the ocean that put the death of the marine life. And if we consume it, it will affect our health. Second, Carbon dioxide is also a serious threat to our creatures, such as polar bears and carrots. Carbon dioxide, a greenhouse gas, make global temperature rise. If it gets more and more hotter, our creatures will be extinct, especially polar bear and carrots. Above those environmental issues, we need to find some solution to solve it. deal with the problem of water pollution. Our Environmental Protection Administration has created a cr criteria. If a factory exhausts over 70,000 millimeter cubic meters of waste gas per minute, the owner will be fined over 1 million NT dollars. While facing these problems, our government also tried their best to formulate new policies. For example, there are many factories discharging their waste water in the ocean and causing serious problems and causing serious problem of water pollution. of carbon dioxide is also a big problem in Taiwan. To reduce the to reduce environmental damage in our government has legislated the the law to fine the factories owners who discharging their water their waste water who 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 discharging their waste waters and motorcycle riders who exhaust too much waste gas from their pipes. In addition to the efforts our government have made, we could also help to protect the environment. First, we can cut down on the use of disposable, disposable tableware and plastic straws. Plastic waste is a serious problem. Recycling plastics doesn't solve the problem. It would be better to stop the problem before it begins. Second, we can take public transportation or ride a bike instead of, instead of driving vehicles or ride a motorcycle on our own. 
the engines in them are producing too much air pollution. Last but not least, we shouldn't get the air conditioner turned on all day long. Just keep the windows open to let the fresh air in. Protecting the environment is everyone's responsibility. Everyone, each of us, should be aware of the importance of environmental protection. Let's take action. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Nice to meet you. Have you ever noticed more and more laborers and new immigrants from Southeast Asia around us? Actually, Taiwan has been maintaining close economic, social, cultural relationships with the nation in Southeast Asia for decades. Nowadays, with the convenient transportation and advanced technology, the whole world has become a global village, just like a close-knit big family. As we know, Taiwan is a small island with limited natural resources. Therefore, it is crucial to be active in interacting with our neighboring countries, further trying to cooperate with them. Because Taiwan is denied almost all the participation in international activities. Fortunately, educational and economic exchanges offer an opportunity to build a bridge for people in Taiwan and Southeast Asia. First of all, in terms of economy, we and our new southbound policy partner countries can work together to enhance bilateral development of trade. Take my uncle for example. He started his tropical fish farming business 10 years ago in Bali, Indonesia. Bringing in Taiwan's innovative technology to Southeast Asia. At the same time, he took advantage of Indonesia's excellent sea conditions and labor, creating his tropical fish breeding industry. Many people around the world come to buy his tropical fish. His successful business not only improved the local industry, but also led to the development of the island's economy. This demonstrated how important global competence is. By doing so, we can surely survive and prosper together. Second, in terms of social well-being, we and our new Southbound Policy Partner country can work together to foster social stability and harmony. This July, my fellow students and I joined a volunteer project. We went to a village in the northern countryside of Thailand, lacking education resources. We did a lot of voluntary jobs there. For example, we taught some little children Chinese, played some fun games with them, and painted the walls of the classroom. In the process, I found people there are simple and friendly. Staying with them is a beautiful experience for me to get to know their country and culture better. We also had wonderful encounters with exotic lifestyles. This trip did expand our social interaction with others, as well as get valuable work experiences. Third, in terms of cultures, we and our new Southbound Policy partner countries can work together to boost a better understanding and respect of cultural diversity. I have classmates whose mother comes from Vietnam. She is enthusiastic and hospitable. Last year, in our school fair, she actively taught us to make her hometown dishes. From preparing the ingredients to seasoning, we learned cooking in Vietnam is quite different from ours, especially spices. This moon festival, she invited our class to have a barbecue together. She shared many stories with us. The most impressed one is the legend about the moon. A boy named Agui had a magic tree, which can cure everything. Later, the tree took him to the palace on the moon. What a coincidence! We have similar stories to celebrate the moon festival. Though we speak different languages, we are actually family. All in all, living in the 
global village were all in the same boat. A small lake will sink a great ship. We can never just sit back and stay out of it. Therefore, we should respect and love one another, regardless of race, religion, political belief, economic and social condition. Above all, we have to cooperate with them, especially those countries in Southeast Asia, so that we can build a stronger partnership. This amazing soft power can definitely bring us Taiwan onto the global stage. Come on, everybody, let's be the bridge, be the change. We young people can surely shine our light and make Taiwan put on the map. Thank you very much. Number one, Every time I'm asked to introduce my country when traveling abroad, I always proudly respond, I'm from Taiwan. Besides saying, Taiwan is an island located in between the southeastern coast of the Asia and the islands among the Pacific Rim. I will elaborate on my introduction from three aspects, natural environment, population and ethnicity, and tourist attractions. Taiwan is one of the famous mountainous islands with the highest peak in Northeast Asia, Yushan, being nearly 4,000 meters in height. Since mountain areas cover the majority of the island, Taiwan's ecological resources are abundant. The plains are relatively narrow and found only in the western region and the valley along the east coast. Apart from steep mountains, beautiful coastal scenes are also part of Taiwan's natural asset. Therefore, it is home to various kinds of beaches. Taiwan features offshore islands, such as Green Island and the Penghu Archipelago, as well as its nine national parks, the best known of which is the Taruko National Park, where people can relish many spectacular terrains and peculiar landscapes of the gorge. Due to its abundant geographical resources, Taiwan also boasts biodiversity, which can rarely be found elsewhere. Taiwan has a population of about 23 million people, which consists of various ethnic groups. The aborigines make up roughly 2% of the total population, while the Han Chinese constitute the rest of it. Taiwanese culture is a distinct result of a mix of traditional Chinese, aboriginal, and Japanese culture, which is also reflected in its cuisine. Taiwanese people are known for treating others with politeness and respect, and the friendliness of the locals is remembered long afterwards. In addition, Taiwanese have also created Asia's most vibrant democracy and liberal society with free press, gender equality, and respect for human rights and animal rights as well. If you want to catch a glimpse of the people's passion for protest, Check out Taipei Main Station on most weekends, or just follow the local news. For those who are eager to travel, Taiwan is an ideal destination for vacation, for it is full of possibilities. In Taiwan, you can cross mountains on hiking trails, or cycle along highway with blue Pacific Ocean on one side, and green volcanic arcs on the other. And if you want a relaxing getaway, there are more than 150 hot springs to choose from. The warm waters of these springs revitalize the body, perfect for a relaxing vacation. Besides, there is one thing that can never be missed, the Taiwanese cuisine. Taiwan offers a variety of Chinese dishes, the best Japanese food outside Japan, and the local specialties. From beef noodles, to indigenous barbecue pork. Nice market serve endless snacks, including oyster omelette, stinky tofu, and shaved ice. When you are thirsty, you can indulge in the juice from the freshest fruit, local craft beer, fragrant teas, and surprisingly, Asia's best gourmet coffee and drinking chocolate. In the past, 
people tended to stereotype Taiwan as a little overcrowded island centered around industry. However, Taiwan is much more than that. It has something for everyone. Stunning natural scenery, rich traditional and modern culture, beautiful beaches, renowned hot springs and delicious food. What's even better is the kindness and hospitality among its people. Taiwan, an island famed for centuries as Formosa, is not only a place worth visiting, but also impressing the global society with its soft power. That's why I can say it out loud with pride. I am from Taiwan. Thank you.